Okay, let's start the meeting. Uh, today's uh, the lecture. Uh, today, uh, we will also move to the CTC uh, explanation. But uh, uh, previously, we didn't actually finish the attention based SR. So, I'd like to uh, continue the discussions about the attention based SR and then move to the, uh, the CTC. So uh, the attention-based ASR is one of the end-to-end uh, uh, -end system. And previously, uh, the, we discussed about the, uh, the realization of the attention-based ASR uh, with the uh, BLSDM-based approaches as a one example, and then uh, the explain it uh, with the uh, transformer-based extension. So, I will go through quickly about the uh, transformer-based uh, the approach. So uh, the first, uh, the transformer-based approach uh, is uh, the using the uh, cell attention, uh, but cell attention is actually only one component of the transformer, and transformer also using the positional embedding, uh, multi head extension, uh, and so on. And the last time, I actually mentioned that the multi head attention, uh, the extension of the attentions, uh, that would be useful uh, for uh, the uh, speech cases. And I will show you one example, actually. So this is the actual uh, plot of the um, uh, attention weight uh, for, uh, the, 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 for one layer and for uh, the, the, uh, the multi head attention. So as you can see that the pattern is very different, right? So this one is quite diagonal. So this means that the, probably this uh, the, uh, the head is uh, the getting the um, uh, information about uh, the, uh, the uh, local information. And this one is blur. So probably still a little bit diagonal, so which means that it's actually tried to capture the uh, non-diagonal, but the, uh, the neighboring context information. And the other two is actually uh, the, the, uh, the attention is, uh, the, the uh, um, pattern is realized the, the across the all the kind of information. So this probably means that we try to capture some uh, global uh, context, uh, which can be speaker or which can be a noise condition or which can be a microphone other uh, information or maybe uh, the uh, some uh, semantic information like a meaning. Uh, we are not very sure, uh, but the, the uh, this uh, is a actually typical pattern uh, of the multi head attention. Some of the attention head is diagonal, and some of them are uh, the, like this kind of figure. And we are expecting that we can capture both local and global uh, information from speech. <laughs> and the transform also has a feed for the neural network component and the residual connection uh, to make it other uh, the, the, uh, transformer block. And this one is used for the encoder. And the decoder uh, is basically having the cross attention part. And last time we also talked about the se several tips, uh, like uh, optimization uh, is very important, uh, and the uh, learning rate uh, should be actually changed uh, depending on the kind of iterations. Uh, and the, the famous uh, the learning rate scheduler is called warm up, uh, which actually at the first increase the learning rate. And then we uh, the try to capture uh, some good uh, the part of the local, uh, the, some good optimum point in the beginning, and then gradually de uh, reducing to further kind of fine tune our model. So note that this uh, the warm up optimizer uh, based approach, warm up scheduler based approaches, is increasing the learning rate in this uh, the, in this particular setup uh, the sixteen epochs. And it can be depending on our kind of our other problems. So to other uh, control of this kind of other uh, warm up optimizer, other uh, stage steps are very important. 
And uh, many of my kind of experience, anyway, this part, the increasing the learning rate is actually very risky. It can actually accelerate the, uh, the, the training and may finally get some kind of better performance. But the learning rate becomes larger, uh, means that the step also becomes larger. And we actually cannot capture the, uh, the some local optimum point. And generally, the learning would be corrupted. So uh, this is my kind of usual uh, the observation that uh, the, the training is uh, the, uh, the, uh, suddenly kind of, it's uh, they're getting better and better, but sometimes uh, the training becomes corrupted. Uh, this is uh, the generally uh, the due to the warm up of the binders, this kind of increasing learning rate uh, the period. So to avoid it, uh, the, my suggestion is usually just reducing the learning rate, uh, the overall learning rate to be reduced, and then we can reduce this peak, right? Or some people also using the, uh, the control, this kind, kind of point uh, to be a uh, the, the, uh, later point uh, so that we can actually avoid to have a uh, very peak and very uh, the, the, uh, high, uh, too, too high uh, learning rate and so on. Well, generally, uh, my uh, the, uh, recommendation is just uh, the making the learning rate smaller. We will usually uh, the, uh, the get the kind of uh, the reasonable point. Okay, so that is a kind of uh, the a review of the previous um, uh, discussions. And now I move to the kind of uh, the uh, performance. Uh, of the uh, transformer, since it's actually quite uh, a large impact, uh, not only for the machine translation, but speech recognition as well. So this is actually one of our group's work. At that time, uh, the people are actually uh, having uh, both uh, the transformer and the, uh, the LSTM, but the people actually in the community cannot fully uh, the investigate the performance improvement uh, and we actually uh, the, the tried to kind of make some comparative studies. And we actually uh, the, the, uh, the perform the comparison of the recurrent neural network, VLSTM uh, based uh, uh, the attention system and the transformer systems for uh, the totally 13 speech recognition tasks. And this one actually including the, uh, some of the, uh, the famous benchmark like Wall Street Journal switchboard, uh, library speech, uh, and so on. And also uh, the including the noisy speech recognition like a chime four and the chime five, aura four and so on. And not only for the uh, English corpus, we also tried it for the uh, other several other languages like uh, uh, the uh, Japanese corpus, uh, the Mandarin corpus, uh, the, and so on. Uh, this one is actually also including the Italian. So as you can see from here to here, uh, transformer actually outperforms uh, the BLSTM in the large margin uh, in the uh, total of the 13 tasks uh, among 15. So this actually did up, yes. Cardi is using CDNN, uh, the CNN. And Cardi is still actually powerful with some of the tasks, I would like to say. Test is uh, the multiple. Like for example, uh, the, in these cases, we using the, uh, the uh, development sets of the Aura 4. Uh, uh, four are the tasks of the uh, Aura 4 uh, in the test set. And in these cases, I think we use the, uh, the two uh, test uh, dev development set and the uh, validation set of the AI shell. And the, the, is there any other? Okay, for example, libre speech has a four test set. So uh, that we also have a four uh, test set we listed here. So uh, the, this actually investigation uh, that the, the we published in the uh, ASR in 2019. And the, this is this actually paper uh, changed the community to dive into the transformer. 
So this other paper is actually one of the most cited paper in the SRE recently. And the, uh, in addition to uh, the, this kind of uh, the, uh, the, uh, performance, we also that, uh, given this transformer to also the uh, TACO, uh, the benchmarking, and we actually uh, the, uh, uh, the tried a uh, review speech, uh, the uh, ASR uh, the benchmark. This is one of the most widely used uh, benchmark in speech recognition now. Uh, since uh, it is first a uh, very uh, good uh, the license, very permissive licenses, so that everyone can use it by just downloading it. And also it's had a thousand dollars. So it's still uh, compared with a product level uh, scale, it is smaller, but thousand dollars is actually quite good uh, enough for us to check the uh, performance even uh, for the, uh, the production system. And the, at that time, uh, at that time, in the 2019, uh, the, the spring 2019, uh, actually the Google people uh, proposed a very, uh, very kind of a, uh, the impressive performance by using spec augment, which I will cover in the uh, later uh, the, uh, the lecture. Uh, spec augment actually changing the, uh, the uh, performance, uh, the, the, this kind of benchmark uh, result. Uh, with a large margin uh, compared with the previous other uh, approaches. And everyone was actually at that time at the thought that, oh, this is very difficult to actually compete with Google uh, given this kind of very large number uh, of the gain. By the way, in this uh, the, the, uh, experiment, Google used a BLSTM. And then uh, we actually tried to compete with them. And we finally uh, get a similar performance or slightly uh, better uh, performance uh, than Google uh, by using a transformer uh, based approaches uh, implemented in ESPNet. And I will use uh, this cartoon to uh, the, uh, present this kind of a competition. So uh, which one is Google? <laughs> yeah, this one is Google. <laughs> and then uh, this one is the ours, but uh, the, with some, you know, better tools, we can somehow uh, compete. So this is, for me, a very good experience uh, the working on the, uh, the, the, this kind of large scale data and the competing with such kind of big companies are quite difficult, but we can somehow manage to compete with them uh, by using the uh, transformer. Uh, they, they, uh, and then at that time, Google is using the, uh, the LSTM. However, uh, Google also started to use uh, the transformer. And actually Google also extended the transformer to the uh, conformer, which I will explain later. And then they actually got the even better performance uh, from ours. So this is actually uh, the <laughs> quite uh, the, the, uh, difficult for us to the compete uh, this number. And uh, let me uh, the explain about the conformer a little bit in the next section. So conformer is actually uh, the combination uh, of the convolution, uh, convolution neural network and the, uh, the cell attention transformer. So as I mentioned in the cell attention, uh, the multi head uh, the picture, uh, the for us to model the, uh, the information about the speech or generally in the sequence problem, we should definitely uh, the consider both global and local information. And the self attention actually is very good at uh, the capturing the global information because it can uh, the, the attend to all the kind of uh, the, uh, the, the speech features uh, thanks to the self attention. And the self-attention can also theoretically perform the local uh, the context information like I showed before. But of course, to do the local uh, the, the information, uh, to capture the local information, uh, the CNN or other variant uh, the, of the feed for the neural network would be better to uh, capture the local information. So uh, the conformer is actually uh, try to uh, the uh, explicitly capture this 
global and local information by changing the architecture inside the transformer. And what they did uh, in the uh, extension of the, uh, the uh, transformer is that actually they make the transformer to be more deep layered. And they're actually inserting the convolution here. And they also put the feed, additional feed for the layer here. Also, there are several small differences that are compared with the pure uh, feed for the neural network and this other feed for the module uh, and so on. They also started to use the relative positional embedding uh, instead of uh, using the absolute positional embedding. But by combining this kind of uh, the local, uh, global uh, context information, uh, conformer achieved a significant improvement uh, from the uh, transformer uh, based uh, the speech recognition. And then uh, leads to the other uh, performance uh, that I showed before. So after this uh, the, the, uh, conformer uh, was proposed, actually uh, the, the many communities, uh, the, including our groups, are trying to kind of uh, 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 follow or uh, 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 compete with this kind of a network. Yes. I say other uh, competition, yeah. However, uh, the, the, it is not only for the competition. If you check the paper, they actually have a good abrasion uh, the analysis that not only for the other uh, conformer block, a, a combination block, uh, but uh, the, the actually having a feed for the network uh, the here and here, they call it macaron, since it's you know uh, sanded by the feed for the. This actually also has some gains, and also the relative positional embedding also has gain. But their paper actually clearly made the showing that actually combination block uh, has the most benefit. Okay. And then the, uh, the, our group actually uh, the also tries to tackle this problem and they uh, proposed the, uh, the method called the branch former. Uh, this is actually quite similar to the, uh, the in terms of the con concept, quite similar to the, uh, the conformer, but uh, the, uh, the global information, uh, we use a self attention network and the local information, we use a speed of other layer, but it's actually extended with the combination, uh, the, the gating. And the, the most uh, the unique difference uh, is that we explicitly making it the parallel architecture, branching architecture than the conformer. As you can see that the conformer is actually cascading the convolution and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, self-attention. So we thought that the, uh, the another alternative approach uh, should be actually using the, uh, the branching architecture and also we saw that this is more flexible uh, because uh, the, we can actually uh, the use either of this uh, the, the local information, uh, sorry, this one is uh, the global, global information or local information. And then this uh, the, uh, the fusion part can uh, the select or choose this kind of information more clearly. So this uh, the architecture uh, that we call it uh, the branch former and actually, uh, the, uh, one of the TA uh, here, Ifan Penn, is uh, the proposing uh, these approaches and presented it this year. But of course, that uh, uh, the, when we made it, this was last year. Yeah, but uh, the, the presented it this year. And uh, this uh, the approach actually first started to get the yes uh, to uh, the, the make the kind of uh, utilize this kind of two global and local information more. And then that we call it that the e branch former, which is extended version uh, of the branch former. And the, uh, this is the result. So we finally, uh, the, the, uh, the approach is the, uh, Google's performance the, again uh, by using this uh, the e branch former. So this is probably the best result uh, the, right now. Uh, without using the, uh, the self supervised or semi supervised training as a pure uh, the supervised uh, training. So, uh, the, one of the messages is that, that, that we can compete uh, with Google 
or you know, big company. Okay, so uh, this is uh, about the, the most mostly about the the the, uh, the architecture part, uh, and I still don't fully kind of explain about some of the tips. So I'd like to mention about it. So first, transformer versus uh, the LSTM. And I showed a kind of a significant improvement, right? And many people actually are misunderstood that this performance gap comes from the architecture. However, in my experience, it is not from the architecture. Actually, when we do the exactly same ways, not only for our group, but the other group also mentioned that the BS team is actually getting a quite similar performance to the uh, transformer. What is the kind of main difference of the transformer and the, uh, the BLSTM? My personal experience is that anyway, the polarization part, this actually makes the training faster. So it's not a very fair comparison, but we actually uh, compare the training time of the, uh, the transformer and the BLSTM uh, in terms of the state of the art architecture, like using, you know, uh, not exactly the same number of parameters, but in terms of performance, uh, the, we kind of selected the best architecture for both transformer and the BLSTM. And the, uh, the, the actually the training time, uh, BLSTM is, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, transformer is three times faster than BLSTM for a uh, training one level. And then uh, the, the, it is actually quite a good uh, the, um, strategy. Uh, if the training epoch is faster, we can actually run the more epochs. And then we can actually use a lot of tricky uh, optimization techniques. And one of the opt uh, tricky optimization is, as I mentioned, uh, warm up optimizer, this one. It actually requires quite a large number of epochs to be uh, the, the converged. And actually, when we use a BLSTM, the, since it is three times slower, so we cannot wait uh, for 50 or 100 epochs. For the transformer, uh, since it is first, we can wait for uh, until this kind of point. And still, actually, until this point, uh, uh, the performance of the transformer and the BLSTM is not very significantly different uh, in my experience. After this kind of uh, region, since uh, this region, uh, the changes are not very large. So we can actually safely performing the averaging operation, model parameter averaging operation. And then uh, finally, uh, we got a significant performance uh, from the uh, that uh, the, the EBL stem. So that is my kind of uh, the experience uh, about uh, using the uh, transformer uh, and the, uh, the BL stem. So uh, the averaging is very powerful. And averaging is usually uh, the getting quite uh, the, uh, the, the effective when we're using a warm up optimizer or other kind of uh, optimizer that has a very good. How to say uh, the, uh, the, uh, the shrinking uh, strategy, and then the learning rate uh, is becomes very small, and the change is also very small, and then we can again safely taking the other uh, averaging uh, operation. That is my kind of experience uh, the, of the uh, transformer uh, versus uh, the BLSTM. But uh, this is also one more uh, tips. Uh, generally, people forgot actually averaging. So uh, the, in your uh, experiments, you guys get some, some similar performance or better performance in terms of the loss. But the, 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 uh, the after that, we got uh, the, uh, perform the, uh, the speech recognition experiments and then performance did not improve. 
there are several reasons, but one of the reasons is that uh, you just uh, forgot to uh, perform the averaging operation. And then you actually could not actually get a good performance. So please make sure to perform the other uh, the averaging operation. Is the coding assignment for uh, include the average operation or it is not. So if you guys will try to get a better performance, maybe uh, the implement the, uh, the model average uh, the operation. Okay, that's a good tip. However, again, you know, it's depend on the optimizer. Uh, that if you guys are using some kind of a, just using the vanilla Adam and so on, I am expecting that you guys might not get a good improvement by using the other uh, model averaging. Uh, it should be with the uh, the, the warm up uh, scheduler. And another kind of uh, the uh, uh, how to say the way of thinking uh, change change of the way of thinking about. Uh, uh, this kind of optimization uh, for me is that we must tune the optimizer. It is really unfortunate or fortunate. Uh, but anyway, many people, you know, just applying to the, some new architecture and then it doesn't, you know, uh, improve the performance or even it doesn't converge. Some cases, probably your new architecture would be wrong. But most cases, actually not due to the, uh, the uh, your architecture. It might be due to the optimizer. So it actually makes our kind of uh, uh, the, uh, exploration a little bit difficult because in addition to changing a new architecture, we have to tune the optimization, optimizer uh, and so on. Uh, but uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, the uh, fortunate or unfortunate yeah? uh, the, the finding for transformer. We are still somehow uh, the uh, we could also use the uh, complicated optimizer, but we are still people just using the Adam or other delta at that time. So we actually don't tune the uh, the, the uh, hyperparameter uh, related to the optimizer so much. Uh, but this is actually one of the uh, quite other difference uh, after and before uh, transformer. And the this coding assignment is also based on transformer, right? So I would uh, recommend you to actually at least changing the learning rate if the learning curve is corrupted, okay? Just making it smaller is usually fine. Next uh, the topic uh, is how to use a language model. So actually uh, the attention-based ASR is uh, based on this formulation. We directly are uh, estimating a PW given O. And compared with the, especially HMM-based approaches, which actually have a clear distinction of the uh, POW given and the PW uh, due to the uh, product rule, attention-based ASR cannot theoretically incorporate language model. So HMM-based approaches have uh, this kind of a form, right? So this is actually not equal, it's proportional. And then we have a language model here, right? So we can theoretically uh, derive the language model. But this, this one, we don't have a language model. So uh, how we kind of incorporate language model? This is theoretically not very true, but that we just using the, uh, the uh, product domain average or uh, the log domain average, I would say, and then using some kind of uh, the weight. That is people usually do. And then we can actually uh, the combine language model score 
and the attention based SR score in the same manner. So this kind of approach is very powerful when we can make a very strong language model. For example, generally, to make a speech recognition system, we need to have a pair data of the speech features and the corresponding transcriptions, right? However, to make a language model, we only need our, uh, the text data. So we can get that from the web or we can get that from the book or we can get that from the articles or uh, whatever. And we can make actually very strong language model here. And to utilize this one, uh, this uh, approach is the, uh, the one of the solution right now uh, the for uh, attention-based SR. And again, this is not theoretically uh, justified compared with the HM-based approaches. So actually this other uh, method has uh, one drawback. That is the language model part is also included in the PW given law, right? Remember that in the beginning of our kind of attention-based SR, I explained that the attention-based approach is almost language model, except that we have a condition, right? So actually internally in the decoder network, we have a language model. And then we also combine the language model. So this means that we have a two duplicated language model. So this actually would be an issue uh, when uh, we apply uh, these approaches. And uh, there are a lot of advanced techniques to avoid this kind of problem by, for example, uh, subtracting language model-like component here uh, by using the, uh, some other neural network and so on. But anyway, I just want to mention that, uh, yes, it is possible to combine the language model by using this kind of very simple manner, but it's actually has a drawback uh, based on the duplication of the two language model uh, the, in this kind of framework. Okay, so another uh, the, uh, the comment about attention-based SR is that training and recognition is slightly different. So uh, to train this kind of uh, uh, model, we actually consider the history. And then uh, the, we get uh, this kind of uh, uh, likelihood and then optimize it based on the cross entropy. How to set this history? Yes, in our cases, in the training cases, we just have our history comes from the transcription, right? So why not we use it? It sounds like the best option, right? Okay for the training. However, during the inference, do we get such kind of a gold history? No. During the inference, we actually estimating the other uh, hist uh, the, some kind of uh, the, the prefix information and using it as a condition. So this one and this one, the difference is this one comes from the transcription, correct history. This one comes from the predicted history. So this actually difference is one of the other uh, biggest approximation uh, of uh, the attention uh, based approaches. And uh, there are a lot of ways to actually uh, the, uh, mitigate uh, this problem. For example, uh, instead of using the, uh, the predicted, uh, instead of using the trans transcription, corrected history, correct history, we can just using the prediction version. Or we can using the, uh, the slightly kind of modify this history to be a little bit wrong uh, by using the smoothing technique and then making this one and this one to be uh, the, the closer. So this other uh, approach uh, is uh, the one of the other uh, 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 problem that 
uh, the, the, the attention based ASR cannot fully solve right now. And there are several other uh, issues uh, like uh, the, the search uh, during the uh, recognition. And that I will explain a bit more later uh, in the search section uh, of this lecture. Okay, uh, the, this is the summary of the uh, attention based SR. First, uh, the attention based SR does not have any conditional independent assumption. However, uh, to realize it, we actually have to provide the other uh, neural network to especially uh, the, the, uh, connecting the input and output information. And then uh, we use the cross attention uh, for the alignment problem. And the trans transformer actually changed the performance, uh, the, the uh, word error rate uh, significantly uh, uh, from the BLSTM. And now the transformer or this, the extension of the transformer like a conformer uh, and so on uh, now, uh, that becomes a kind of standard approach. And the one of the issue uh, of the uh, attention-based ASL uh, is that, as I mentioned, uh, the attention is too flexible. This is actually uh, the uh, soft alignment uh, that always has this kind of problem. While hard alignment-based uh, approaches based on CTC and RN and transducer uh, doesn't have this kind of drawback. And I will move to uh, CTC. Uh, any questions about attention-based ASR? Yes. Okay, so let's uh, the, the discuss about the, uh, the CTC, which is one of the other end-to-end uh, -end method uh, the compared with the attention-based approaches. And this is a review. So CTC, uh, first introduce a blank symbol. And then uh, the introducing the alignment variable in our lecture using a D, which actually having uh, information of the blank and the original token. And we kind of are making it at the same length as the uh, input signal, input uh, the data, uh, so that uh, that we can provide the alignment information based on CTC. And I just want to mention many times that this uh, the T can be after the down sample T. I, I will, the, the, for the simplicity, I would not kind of uh, the, uh, change the notation. Uh, please understand that this T would be after the down sample. Okay. Anyway, a CTC is starting from the a PW given law, same as the other, all other, uh, the, uh, the formulations. And introducing the, uh, the latent variable, D. And from here to here, again, uh, the, 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 we will have some derivations in our previous lecture. So if you are interested in the, how to derive from here to here, please also check that. But it is actually given uh, the CTC constraint. This is uh, also uh, the, the obvious. This part is equal. There is no kind of a, uh, the approximation. We use assumption uh, based on this kind of a CTC based on uh, the, the, the alignment, but we don't use approximation from here to here. However, from uh, here to here, we actually using the conditional independence assumption. Uh, this is a key uh, part uh, of CTC, so please remember it. And I will also show the uh, the uh, Z, uh, the, uh, what kind of Z uh, that looks like. Uh, and this is actually represented as a torus uh, more efficiently. Okay. So this is a more like a review of the, uh, the CTC. Okay, then CTC, the focus is how to get PZT given law. Let's try to kind of estimate 
uh, this part by using a neural network, by using the actual uh, neural network. And here, we can actually use any of the encoder architecture. Like we can use BLSTM or CNN or feed forward or transformer or conformer or branch former. We can use everything. The reason is because, you know, this is the same length, right? The, the input and the output is same length. So we can just using the normal uh, transformation uh, the, based on the, uh, the neural network. So we could use any of them. We don't have to care about adjustment of the length. The adjustment of the length can be done after this alignment was done over the end. Okay, then the, the, we got some kind of a, a, a vector, hidden state vector, uh, based on the, uh, the one of the other uh, architecture uh, here. And then the last stage is to con convert this one to the probability. How to do it? First, convert this uh, hidden state vector, which can be uh, 10. And 24, what, uh, 20, the 48, or 500, uh, depending on our configuration. And, and we just, you know, are the converting this to the, uh, the, uh, the, the vocabulary size, uh, the, uh, the same as the, uh, the, the uh, vocabulary size by using the linear transform. By the way, we have a plus one because we also need to consider the blank symbol, right? But basically that this, after this linear transform, we can have a, uh, the, the, uh, the some kind of a real value of the vocabulary plus blank, and then taking the softmax, and then we can get a PZ to get PZT a given law. So this is actually the CTC. So it is very, very simple. And then the training is actually a little bit complicated. To do the training, we actually consider the all possible uh, summation uh, of the alignment pass. But similar to the HMM cases, this summation in the product form can be efficiently uh, the computed uh, by using the, uh, the, the forward backward algorithm. And this derivation is a little bit long. So I kind of skip this uh, the, the, in this lecture. But if you want to see uh, know more about how to kind of uh, get the derivative of this function, it is basically very similar to the forward backward algorithm. So now you guys know the forward backward algorithm. So I believe you guys can follow it. But anyway, uh, you can check uh, the, this uh, the, the Alex Graves uh, the thesis, or you can also check uh, Professor Bikshara's course about the CTC. He also mentioned about how to train. Uh, this other uh, CTC part by using the forward backward algorithm. Okay, so given this kind of CTC uh, the training, uh, we can actually make CTC work. And then I also that the, the, the providing one important tip for CTC training. So CTC or even the HMM as well. The alignment pass, of course, must reach the final token, right? Otherwise, we cannot show this as a sentence. And then other, we cannot actually other, make this problem to be well-defined. And generally, I would say that the, the CTC uh, will be uh, the, the valid if the down samples uh, input length it's either the equal or longer than other, other output token. So if we satisfy uh, T is larger than J, and then usually uh, we can make CTC to be trained. And uh, uh, as you can see in the T equal uh, the five cases, that what's uh, appeared in my lecture or even in the midterm exam. So people may remember this kind of authorities. Okay. So in these cases, of course, the, uh, we find our path 
that can lead to the final uh, token. So uh, the, this other uh, problem, we can actually try in the CTC. Next, if we make it shorter, T equal four. Actually, we could still find the path and then we can train the model, fortunately. Okay. So the question is T equal three cases. Um, in this case, we could actually not reach to the final because E and E are same token, right? And the two distinguish uh, the, this uh, the token to be the other uh, conjective, uh, the, the, the token in the output, we have to go through the plan. So actually in this cases, uh, uh, the, we have to make uh, the T to be one more larger than the output length. So if we have a more, for example, repeated token uh, in the, uh, the output, this other uh, constraint becomes other uh, more other uh, serious. Okay. So uh, the, this is the most well known limitation of the CTC. If the, uh, the CTC, uh, the alignment does not reach to the last token, we actually cannot compute the CTC loss. And this is actually one of the most typical uh, the questions when we train the CTC. So please be careful uh, about it. And in general, if we using the general configuration, like a general means like a window size shift uh, is like a, a reasonable uh, the millisecond, like eight or 10 millisecond. And we only do the down sampling uh, the four times or six times and so on. This means that uh, one frame may correspond to the 40 millisecond or 32 millisecond. This is actually still at a shorter than general uh, length of the boil. So this means that most cases, actually it's uh, the, this kind of uh, CTC uh, condition uh, will be satisfied. But again, uh, we uh, uh, encounter a lot of kind of uh, the, the problem comes from this one. And I am very sure that in the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the our kind of coding assignment for people may also encounter this kind of issue. In this case, uh, please che always check the input and the output lengths, okay? But the input lengths is not the original lengths after the down sample, okay? And then check to see whether uh, the, your input length is always at a higher than output, uh, longer than the output. And if uh, it is not, probably data preparation uh, the, uh, of your kind of uh, the, uh, the work is uh, wrong, or original data may be wrong. This would not be applied to the coding assignment for because data preparation and the recording is already given. But if you uh, we work on the uh, the uh, custom project and uh, making the data preparation uh, the by yourself, why we you will try to use the, the other data than other, our kind of usual data. Uh, please check this kind of two possibility. And the third possibility is that if you guys setting the kind of down sampling to be wrong, like you know doing a bit more aggressive down sampling by making a bit larger stride, or you either make some mistakes for the other signal processing part, and making your feature to be at a, the at a lower other frequency, uh, then uh, this kind of CTC condition uh, that will be broken. So if you kind of are, are the, faced on the issue that CTC does not return the correct loss, please first check the length, okay? By the way, one more kind of a comment. Due to this constraint, CTC will not be used for TTS. 
one reason of the other uh, we cannot use TTS for CTC is that CTC is uh, the TTS targeted a uh, continuous vector, like uh, the, the, the log metal filter bank or whatever, right? But we can discrete that, right? And then this is a sequence problem, sequence to sequence problem from the token to the uh, the, the discretized uh, the, the, uh, the speech features. Yeah. Actually, attention we can apply it. However, uh, the, the CTC we cannot apply because output is generally longer than input. But actually, there are a lot of ways to make it work. Like, for example, instead of using the down sampling, we use the up sample. We use up sampling in the input token and then making it larger or uh, longer than the, 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 the output, uh, the, the speech feature. And then we can actually use using CTC for uh, the, the, the um, uh, TTS as well. Okay, so one more final remark of the CTC training is that the CTC similar to the, uh, the HMM cases Anyway, it uses the uh, the uh, log sum exponential uh, the, quite frequently, and actually numerically very unstable. So even you got your kind of problem satisfy uh, CTC condition, sometimes CTC providing some other uh, the, uh, the none or some other values irregular value, and your training may be stopped. In this case, it's possibly due to that uh, the, your sentence might be too long, and then numerical error would be accumulated more. So you guys can also check whether your kind of uh, the uh, sentence uh, in the kind of a, a regular side, which is you know ten second or twenty second and so on. Twenty second is okay, but the one minute, ten minutes. It's getting the kind of uh, the, uh, the training very difficult. Uh, the first due to this kind of numerical error. And the other is that we cannot fit them to the GPU memory. Okay, so this is the kind of uh, remark uh, when we train the CTC. And another very important remark of CTC is conditional independence assumption. I kind of mentioned many times that that is a kind of a, a unique property of the CTC compared with the other end-to-end -end method. And I sometimes kind of mentioned that it is a drawback. It is an approximation. And it's actually true in terms of the performance. Due to this conditional independence assumption, CTC actually generally cannot outperform attention-based ASR or other end-to-end -end ASR like RN transducer because of this conditional independence assumption. However, condition, conditional independence assumption is not always bad. Actually making the model are quite simple, right? Compared with the attention-based approaches, we just make a kind of an encoder, that's it. So it is actually quite simple. And also inference is actually very fast. So I will explain it. So the inference in CTC, uh, there are a lot of kind of advanced method uh, to do the in inference, but the, I will explain about one of the most simple uh, the inference method in CTC, which is the just performing the greedy search. And what is a greedy search I mentioned before in the beta B algorithm, uh, the search has a several kind of a possibility. One more simple approach is the greedy search, which actually are taking the argmax for uh, the every time without caring about the, 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 any of the history. So taking the argmax in the first time stamp and then second time stamp, and then uh, the, the doing that even for the final completely kind of independently performing the other uh, argmax. So this is a greedy search that I introduced in the HMM. And then as I mentioned, beta B is better because beta B can find the, uh, the, the global, uh, the, the, the optimum, uh, the, 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 
uh, the pass based on the algorithm. But CJC people are actually using the greedy search. Uh, this is because due to the conditional independence assumption, uh, greedy search is actually uh, the, uh, uh, represented as this kind of uh, the argument for individual probability. Okay, this is completely independent across the frame. So this means that we can actually even parallelize this operation. So the other is actually, it doesn't happen. Even greedy search, uh, we actually cannot make this part to be parallelized because it depends on the previous, the estimated uh, the, uh, the state. HMM cases, you know, uh, the, since HMM. So it's actually Markov process. So to make a kind of next state, we actually have to compute the, uh, the probability given the previous state. So we have to wait this one to compute this one. But CTC, thanks to the conditional independence assumption, we can actually parallelize this uh, inference approaches. So the decoding is super fast. Although you know performance is you know worse, but the decoding is very very fast. And this uh, approach, this is actually not auto regressive, right? Others are auto regressive, like you know, given uh, the previous hidden state like in HMM or the, the encoder decoder attention based one is more the the, the strict. It's uh, consider the entire history, right? This is very autoregressive. But CTC is also called the non autoregressive model. And the, the nature of the non autoregressive model is that the inference is super fast. Um, another part is that we can actually also combine it with a language model, by the way. C uh, CTC can easily combine the language model. How to do it? Uh, when we, for example, reaching to the uh, it is during the beam search. And again, the, about the beam search, I will explain it later. And this is actually not exactly true because during the beam search, uh, this part, SEE, can also be changed. It can be SEA and so on. But it is very difficult to represent the other uh, all possible tokens. So I just using the, reuse the previous the alignment, uh, the, the, the figure. But anyway, uh, the, we when we, for example, are reaching to the token, we can just adding the language model. And then the, we can actually also combine CTC with, the, with an external language model. That is very similar uh, to the attention-based encoder decoder. However, uh, compared with attention-based encoder decoder, CTC would actually not have an uh, issue of the duplication of the uh, leverage dependency, we again, thanks to the conditional independence assumption. So uh, CTC model itself may implicitly have some contextual information, but as a mathematical form, anyway, it doesn't have an uh, explicit level dependency, which can be ordered by external language model. So this combination is working uh, quite well. Uh, then uh, the, the uh, attention-based approaches, which again has a kind of issue of duplicated language model component from the decoder part of the attention and the pure language model. Okay, so the last eight minutes, I think I will try to finish this uh, relaxation of the conditional independence assumption. Still, we try to kind of form uh, the, the CTC. Uh, however, uh, the conditional independence assumption unfortunately degrade the performance, right? So let's try to uh, the, relax this kind of approaches. And actually in this direction, our group has been working on a lot uh, for this kind of problem. So first question is, does CTC really do not hold the token dependency in the model? And actually this is what exactly you mentioned. Theoretically true, there is no level dependency in the output. However, Neural network is deeper, very deep structure, right? And the some early layer may already have enough information to solve 
the, uh, the, the, the uh, predictor token, right? So this part implicitly, but it may already have an information of the token in this hidden state. And then what's happening in the following layers? Following layers, I use a self-attention, but it can be BLSTM or whatever. It's actually following layer is given entire uh, the information of the previous layers to predict the next other uh, hidden state, right? And then if we have some token information implicitly here, we can actually use this context information in the next layer. And the next, next, la next, next layer may have a more other uh, such kind of context information. So actually due to this kind of implicit uh, the contextual modeling, especially after the transformer, CTC uh, the is becomes quite powerful and filling the gap, still kind of have some gap, but compared with the previous DLSTM based approaches, CTC actually uh, the, makes a kind of uh, the, the cross the gap uh, of the, the, the between the CTC based the attention or RN transistor based approaches, thanks to this kind of implicit uh, the contextual uh, modeling. And some people still kind of uh, uh, may say that, no, 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 CTC is uh, obviously worse than the, uh, worse than the attention to RN transistor, several papers already mentioned. Usually this, these papers are comparing them in BLSTM, by the way. <laughs> so after the transformer, after the cell attention, this kind of di discussion was actually changed, but still has some gap. Okay, nice. If we have some implicit information of the token here, we could actually make neural network to hold the context information in the following layer. Let's try to boost this direction. And I will introduce two methods. One is intermediate CTC and the other is self-conditioned CTC. Intermediate CTC uh, is actually uh, the several uh, the, the variations. And one of the other uh, the approach is actually proposed here in CMU in 2018. But at that time, it was not based on transformer. And the data uh, that we actually, uh, the, our group actually revisited uh, this uh, intermediate CTC with a transformer by considering this kind of a contextual nature and how to boost this contextual information. We actually put a law, exactly same as here. Then what's happening? This part of the information is more care about doing the ASR in this stage already, okay? So, so that this hidden state has more token wise information because the loss is here. So to you know, uh, to satisfy this loss, we have to do speech recognition in this stage, right? So by adding this kind of intermediate CTC loss in the middle, and then we actually making the contextualization uh, the, the more uh, the, the, the valid. And then following layers could have a uh, benefit of the, this other the, the contextual information and then conditional independence assumption is relaxed. There's a further extension in the, the called the self-conditioned CTC. This approach is still implicit, right? This does information may have token information, but the, the, it is still hidden state vector. Self-conditioned CTC actually after softmax which is more explicitly having an information of the token. This information is actually added to the, uh, this uh, the, the, uh, the layer. Still, this is the, the, uh, the hidden state vector, but now that we have a more explicit token information, right? It's like doing the SR twice. First we do the SR and the, using this information, in, incorporated here. And then uh, we actually having our, uh, this part is like, you know, the language model, right? 
So we actually have a language model information in the following layers and then do the CTC. Although, by the way, uh, the, this final layer is still mathematically, theoretically, uh, the, uh, the token in, uh, independent, but this feature already considered the language concept. So this uh, the approach is the called uh, the self-conditioned approaches. Yes. Yes, this is a very good question. Some cases we use exactly the same. Some cases we use, for example, slightly different information. Like for example, in this shallow layer, of course, this neural network is weaker than uh, this uh, neural network, right? And then we actually using the simpler, easier task here than the, uh, the this one. How to do it? For example, here we use a phoneme information, phoneme prediction. Phoneme prediction is slightly easier than uh, the very large uh, the, the BP token estimation, or maybe using the very coarse BP token, just changing the vocabulary size of the BP to be smaller, like this one to be 100 and this one to be 5,000. Again, this one is easier than this one, right? By doing a kind of controlling the kind of difficulty uh, that we can also uh, make this training to be stable. But generally to get a kind of benefit, we're just using the same token, that will be fine. For this kind of a, uh, the, the benefit of getting the contextual information, okay? So this approach is actually one, oh, sorry, it's already 6 p.m. <laughs> uh, this approach is uh, the one of the method uh, to relax the conditional independence assumption. And I will extend about uh, uh, the another direction of relaxing the conditional independence assumption in the next week. 